Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an engine alignment, well, engine install and alignment. So we have our motor freshly painted. We have our motor mounts back in powder coat. So we're going to put the motor mount on. We're going to put our oil injection lines on, and then we're going to drop it in, and I'll show you how to align it. Very nice. Dude, you know what the color of this powder coat's called? Purple. Simbad. Sim I don't know why. Was Simbad purple? I don't even know. Okay, well, Simbad purple. All right, so we're gonna mount this up, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna have Nick, who's behind the camera, help me uh, drop the engine into the hull, because we don't have a lift or hoist, and then we'll get our alignment tool out, and we'll start our alignment. Nick's gonna attempt to do this by himself. See how it goes. That's a true professional right there. Oh, it's in. Oh my God, it's in. That's what she said. Looks good, dude, looks mint. All right, that's it for this episode. Catch you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, we gotta hook up our, we gotta hook up a couple things. We gotta make sure that our ground wire lead is passed through to where the battery is. And then we gotta pull our power that goes to our starter. Starter. Okay, so that's there. And then we'll start hooking up our lines because it's a pain to get all your oil lines and your water lines hooked up after it's already in. All right, so we're gonna do our return first. Okay. Okay, now while the engine's tilted, we're gonna put our drain on. I'm gonna zip tie those just because I don't want to take the risk of uh, puncturing the line. Yeah. All right, now we should probably do our injection line. Too long? Yeah. lines put it back on the mounts gently yeah 
just ever so slightly. You know, you don't want to you don't want to chip up your new paint. So we got our oil feed line hooked up. We got our return line hooked up. Injections hooked up. Injection feed lines hooked up. Our grounds are in the back. Our water's hooked up. Our power we need to tighten, and then we'll loosely put our bolts in, and we'll uh, hook up the alignment tool. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. She bangs. She bangs. She bang. Yeah. Alright, cool. That is all in. Alright, so now we're going to take our short bolts and we're going to loosely put them in the back. Hand, a couple, a couple revolutions, nothing crazy. You have to wiggle the motor for them to fit. Okay, that's the back. Sorry. We'll get the front. This is a javelin I got from Zeus. <laughs> Time to insert the shaft. All right, so this is your alignment tool, and then you're gonna get the mounting plate. With the insert, that's going to go on the jet pump. Okay. All right. Now you're going to find the bolts for these. Do not tighten it down super hard. Just snug it up so that this plate's not moving. And then I'll show you how to align it on the inside. Here's how I do it. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but this is how I do it. The engine's completely loose. All three bolts are loose. Your mounting plate is secured to your jet pump housing. I'm gonna put the sh shaft inside of it. No lube? Huh? No lube, dude. You're going in dry. Bite the pillow, babe. All right. And now, if you look inside here, right, you'll see it coming through. But if you look, it's kind of bad lighting, but if you look, it's hitting on the bottom side of the PTO and it's hitting this side of it. So it's on the bottom and this side. So that means we need to go down on this side. So I'll loosen up this mount now. I'll take one of these shim plates out and then I'll put it back in because if I crank this down right now, it's not going to seat it enough for it to go down. You can, sh you can force it in there, but the goal is, is that when you slide it in, you don't get that hit. Here how it hits. Yeah. You want one fluid motion to go straight in without jamming it in there like that. So because this is pretty close, I would say that that the front mount and this side mount's okay. This one just needs to come down, then we'll see where we're at. So I'll loosen up that mount now. I'll take some of these shim plates out. And then once I see what shim plates are there, I'll be able to tell if I need to add a couple thin ones or deduct one. So there's two plates on here, one thick and one thin. So I can tell right off the bat that just by deducting this thin plate isn't gonna do much, because here it is, here it is with no. Oh, you know what? It goes pretty good in there. Does it? Yeah. It's hitting the top a little bit. See how the top? You can hear it just hit the top. Yeah. So let's put this thin one in there. But it's gonna sink down. So it might need more than this. Okay, so you gotta tighten this down first. Okay, see how this is? Nah, it's still hitting the top. All right, so we're gonna put, I got a bunch of plates here. I got a bunch of plates. So I'm gonna take another thin plate. Take this thin plate. I'm gonna put it underneath that one that we just torqued down. So 
see if he does the trick. Okay. Drum roll. Alright, let's see how it is. Still hitting the top. Barely. So I'm gonna put one more thin plate in there. Third time's charm. Yeah. Now, usually it takes a while because you're still fitting this all dry. None of your bolts are torqued down. So when you actually torque down the bolts for the motor, it's gonna sink even more. So you just gotta wanna get it relatively close now so that when you do sink it down, it should be okay so. Loosen these a little bit more. Okay. Wow. Just throwing sockets around. Good save. It's pretty close. We need to go up on this side. And this motor mount's crooked too, see that? See how it's cocked? Oh yeah, it's, it's, so it's probably part of the problem. Yeah. See what's on this side. Okay. So there's two thick ones on this one. So we'll put a thin one on it and see how good it gets. Way too much. Yeah, something got worse. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, so let's see. Work it down, see what we All right, so now with the shaft still in the PTL, I'm gonna torque down my mount bolts so I can see how good or bad it is. Okay. Here a little bit of the, uh, the shaft rub on it, but if you can see, it's got oil around it or grease from the old PTL, um, just because we didn't get all of it out of there. But it's perfect. It has nothing. It goes straight to the back. Hit it from the back. So that's a line. Cool. Alright, so the most important part of doing an engine alignment is being patient. I know it took a little to no time on this video, but in real life it's very tedious. So all you have to do is pay attention to where your alignment tool is hitting your PTO. So now that we have the engine aligned, we're going to put the drive shaft in and we're going to put our newly restored pump that we just put a new wear ring and everything else in that we did on our last video. All right, so before you put your drive shaft in, make sure you get a new uh, boot. So I buy new ones off OSD Marine. They're like seven bucks. And we'll probably either use 
the OEM clamps if you, if you successfully took them off without damaging them. Otherwise, you can just use a, a zip tie. It'll be fine because you're not supposed to have that much boot pressure in there anyways. Otherwise, you'll blow a hole in it when you grease it. All right, so now is our time to insert our drive shaft. Make sure you put new bumpers in. These are also on OSD Marine. And um, if you don't, then you'll certainly know when you start it up because it's going to chatter like crazy. Also, clean these splines out. I did them with the wire wheel. <clears throat> You're probably gonna have to rotate this a couple times for it to sit in the shaft or you'll get it first time sometimes. Make sure you have new O-rings on here so it meets your back plate. And then we also need to put in our neoprene ring in here. So I'll put the neoprene ring on first and then I'll put our jet pump on. It's All right, so these are also on OSD Marine. for are double-sided taped. So don't stick it all at once, walk it around. So it's at the bottom. Now, there's going to be people that are like, bro, these are not an XP. I don't care, dude. I put these on every time instead of that RTV because it's much easier to take off. I've never had any problems. So if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Oh, we got a first timer. It's in. That never happens. Wow. Must be some YouTube luck. Yeah, probably. They'll say it was Photoshop. <laughs> All right, so before you torque this jet pump down, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're able to start your ski first. I used a Delrin wear ring, which is from OSD, and sometimes because of the clearance, if you torque it all the way down, it'll bind the impeller shaft, and it'll make it so that the impeller doesn't actually spin inside the wear ring. It almost seemed like you're, something's wrong with your engine. So when it's snug to the actual ski, start it for a little bit, not a long period of time, maybe like 10 seconds. Make sure it rotates perfectly, and then once you turn it off, go back and in a cross pattern, torque your jet pump down to 24 foot pounds. Thanks for tuning in this video. Hopefully we helped you out with installing your engine, aligning it, and put your drive line together. On the next video, we'll be putting our freshly rebuilt carbs, which we did a video on a month ago, and finally get this thing running so we can get her on the water and test it out. Thanks for tuning in.